Einstein submitted his doctoral thesis in 1901 to the University of Zurich. He withdrew it in 1902, then resubmitted it, but it was rejected because it was too short. The addition of one sentence led to its eventual acceptance, <laughs> which Einstein himself thought was very funny, and you obviously do too. <laughs> Einstein eventually got a job at the patent office in 1902. He married Mileva in 1903, after the birth of Lyserle, their illegitimate daughter. They later had two sons, Hans Albert and Edward. What happened to the daughter, we don't know. Mileva's contribution to Einstein's scientific work is contested. Some biographers suggest she played a peripheral role. However, Andrea Gabor says that Mileva subsumed her own scientific ambition and interests to those of her husband, and there is no doubt that she must have been exceptional in her own right to have got as far as she did. Einstein himself credited his wife with solving his mathematical problems, and she probably proofread his papers. It seems likely that she was also a sounding board for his ideas. Whatever the truth of the matter, Gabor says that there is fragmentary evidence to suggest that the original versions of Einstein's most famous articles on the photoelectric effect, Brownian motion, and the theory of relativity were signed Einstein Marity, Marity being the Hungarian version of Marek. In 1905, after completion of the paper on special relativity, Mileva is quoted as boasting to her father that she and Einstein had just finished some important work that would make her husband world famous. And indeed, it eventually did. Einstein eventually got a university job at Bern University in 1908. That was the beginning of his academic career. Einstein's attitude to science and academia were influenced not only by the way he had been taught science, but also by the way he was treated by other scientists. There is lots of evidence to show that there was a considerable amount of professional jealousy, and this may be another reason why he took so long to be awarded a Nobel Prize. Some biographers have argued that some scientists could not understand relativity, and bear that in mind when Richard tries to explain it to you. So opposed making an award for this paper in case it was later proved wrong. White and Gribben argue that Einstein was passed over for the Royal Astronomical Society Medal in 1920 because of the significant influence of Einstein's detractors, who objected on the basis of jealousy or political influence. Anti-Semitic feeling was very strong in some quarters. Einstein subjected science itself to criticism. He did not appear to view it as a superior belief system, often discussing the difference between science and other cultures. Nor did he think scientists should be put on pedestals. He argued that non-scientists had as much right to discuss scientific issues as the so-called experts, a man after my own heart. As for the teaching of science, he argued that lessons should be interesting. A young mind, he said, should be spared formulae altogether. Demonstrating a pretty experiment was for Einstein the recommended method of capturing young minds. My reading of Einstein's views of science and scientific culture is that they are as relevant today as they were 70 to 100 years ago. He was very concerned with what he saw as a corrupting influence on the scientist, the need to be successful. He would have nothing to do with the production of what he called waste paper in the form of academic publications, which he viewed as the great blemish of the academic world. What do you think he would say on the topic of the performance-based research fund if he were here today? I think we can be pretty sure that it would not be a subject on which he would remain silent for long. A number of biographers have discussed Einstein's genius, and Dennis Bryan has a chapter devoted solely to a discussion of Einstein's brain, which has been preserved. 
Underlying these discussions is the desire to explain how Einstein managed to achieve work of such sheer brilliance. Psychologist Anthony Storr suggests that the theory of relativity could only emerge from a personality with a strong sense of detachment, someone who could stand back and observe from the outside, someone whose behaviour, he says, is indicative of schizophrenic tendencies. Einstein himself, when asked to account for his discoveries, said that he did so through both intuition and inspiration. He said, Sometimes I feel I am right, but I do not know it. I'm enough of an artist to draw freely on my imagination, which I think is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination circles the world. And on that inspirational note, I will now pass over to Richard to explain relativity in an understandable, relatively speaking, fashion. Some scientists said that they couldn't understand relativity and that might be the reason that he didn't get the Nobel Prize earlier. So if you're still a little confused, you're not alone. So there you have it, a brief portrait of a creative, imaginative and brilliant man, but a very complex one. He was a man who seems to have polarised people. They either loved him or they hated him and sometimes with a vengeance. He died in 1955 and at the time a cartoon appeared in the newspaper showing the earth with a sign on it saying, Albert Einstein lived here. And that's why we're here tonight, to celebrate the World Year of Physics, exemplified by the equation that made his mark, E equals MC squared. Thank you. Which brings us to time for questions. <laughs> we'll start with you, sir. Um, my name's Tony Ball, and I'm not a physicist, but I was just wondering, what, why is um, the speed of light constant? We don't know. <laughs> I mean, the thing is that, it, w as physicists go out, we measure certain things, and we say, all right, we measure the masses of objects or the velocities of things. We're simply saying what we measure about our, uni about our universe. All right, the speed of light is a constant as far as we know. But of course, you may be aware that some physicists are, or cosmologists are questioning that. Is the speed of light constant throughout time? Did light have the same speed, shall we say, five billion years ago? Or will it have the same speed? Or does the speed of light gradually change? We don't have the answers to those questions. And why there's a constant, I don't know. I guess Einstein, talking what Leslie was just saying, would say that this is the, if you like, the hand of the creator. These are questions we simply do not have the answer to. My name is Maggie Gray, and I'm simply interested in Einstein. But my question is on the social size per side. Perhaps Leslie can answer it. You said something in the beginning about um, Einstein's Jewishness probably being important in his life. What did you mean by that? And was he and his family observant Jews? Um, I think that he, he certainly didn't describe himself as a religious Jew. They didn't practice, um, they weren't religious Jews. He was involved, um, how can I explain this? Certainly I would say a cultural rather than a religious Jew, right? When it comes to religion, he's very contradictory in what he actually says. Sometimes some of his quotes give the impression that he is um, an atheist to some extent. Um, or certainly believed in a creator, but not a creator as um, a one God, or certainly a creative force, shall we say. But what he said depended on who he was talking to, and it depended on, on the type of question that was asked, so that when children asked him questions, he would often reply in such a way that implied that perhaps he was religious. But you can read other things he said, which suggested that he wasn't. But I certainly believe he thought that there was some kind of creative force but not a god as lots of people would define it. 
He um, certainly was involved in the establishment of a Zionist state, and his papers were left to the Hebrew um, University there, and he was involved in the establishment of that. So his, his Jewishness was obviously really important to him, and the reason why he left Germany as early as he did, which was many years before the Second World War, was because of that. And he was obviously the victim of anti-Semitism again and again and again. <laughs> 